I've done quite a few videos on why you should not be trading to get out of debt. And in this Clay Trader Mail video, we're gonna look at a real life example of why exactly I say that. Now, I'm not gonna beat this dead horse just because like I said, I've talked about it in multiple other videos, but having debt and then looking at the market as a way to trade your way out of debt or just get out of debt, more simplistically stated, it's just not a good reason for all the psychological issues that go into trading. And then you add in the component of, okay, I gotta make this amount because I have a credit card bill or this, that, or the other due at the end of the week or at the end of the month. That sort of mindset is just gonna lead you to disaster and it's gonna lead you to gambling. And the hole is only gonna get bigger. I'll put it like that. And I realize, okay, Clay, that's just theory. You're just, that's your opinion. You know, I, I think that I could trade. I think I could use the market to get out of debt. And you know, that, that's fine, but at least bear with me through the remainder of the video and let's look at somebody that took that pathway that tried to get out of debt by using the markets and you know, how that all unfolded for them. And before I get into this, you know, I fully give this person props for fessing up and for just admitting that, yeah, they probably went down a path that they shouldn't have. Thanks for this note. I tried to do this, trade my way out of debt, and you nailed it, I got burned. I actually lived off of credit card debt for a few months so I could save up $25,000 to pattern day trade. Now a little bit of context here, within the US markets, there is a regulation that says, if you want a pattern day trade, which PDT is, that's what it stands for, then you need to have $25,000 in your account. So this person said, yeah, you know what, I have $25,000, but in order to keep and have, and continue to have $25,000, I'm gonna to need to use credit cards for all the other expenses in my life. So they were you know, paying off everything that they needed to pay off with a credit card so that they could take that $25,000 and day trade with it. That, that's not good. It may sound like you're not trying to trade your way out of debt. In this situation, true, but this person is actually putting themselves into debt in order to day trade. So it's all one of the same, whatever you know, perspective you look at it, and this is just putting a lot of pressure on yourself as you're gonna quickly find out. And ended up losing about $18,000. My debt problems got worse by trying to trade and trading emotionally at that. I got caught in a short squeeze and was burned bad. My last $14,000, which was my pattern day trader on life support was cut in half in five minutes. Your service and your philosophy and your approach are great and is perfect for people who need to learn caution before diving in. So as you see, they had the $25,000. They decided, you know, I'm gonna use credit cards to pay for everything else. And in a very quick amount of time, you saw losses all over the place, getting caught in a short squeeze and losing big chunks of money in, I mean, five minutes. Can, can it really get any shorter than that? And this is just debt, trying to trade, spinning out of control. This person mentioned the word emotionally. And you know, I'm not trying to sit here and say, I told you so, but this is, what, this is why I preach that. When you introduce needing to make money and then you're burdening yourself with debt and all these other different payments that are flying in, it, it, it's an emotional wreck. As anybody can tell you that's trading without debt, it's already a, a, a big enough mental game in and of itself. But you act or you factor in all these other different uh, variables, things just get nasty as you saw right there. And in fact, they can get nasty very quickly. I mean, five minutes, money gone, crazy. Now I have given up day trading for a time and I'm going to pay off my debt and my new trading debt the old fashioned way. The only silver lining is I now have $81,000 of net carryover losses that I can deduct each year, $3,000 each year, for the next couple of decades. The one part that really sticks out to me is that parentheses where you know he states, and my new trading debt. So now there's really, there's kind of two portions of debt that this person has to worry about paying over. And when you have $81,000 of losses that you can carry forward, uh, I, I guess from a tax perspective, okay, that's a benefit, but really, those are the benefits, those are the tax write-offs that you never wanna see. Remember, it's always a good thing. One of the best problems you can have as a trader is, oh great, I gotta pay taxes. Well, yeah, if you have to pay taxes as a trader, that means you're making money. That is a good thing. So again, and I'm not saying that this person is all excited about it. They're just trying to find you know, some sort of uh, light in the tunnel here. But yeah, two, two types of debts, debts now and you know, $81,000 in you know, deduction tax-wise, you know, trading and debt, just not a good combination. My best day, I gained $15,000 net in one hour. After gaining an additional 15,000 
that I also lost that day, but I netted $15,000. And that gave me unrealistic expectations early in my trading experiment. Now from his perspective, I can see how that would give him unrealistic expectations because, oh man, I made $30,000 and I lost 15,000, so I still made 15,000. But from somebody, my perspective, and my perspective being anybody that's traded for a while, I mean, anybody looking at that says, whoa, whoa, those are some big swings. That is some massive account volatility there. That's, that's, that's not good. Sure, you made $15,000 on the day, but wait a second. For those big old swings within a single day, that tells me that you are just out there running around, essentially gambling and don't have any sort of true strategy. So, you know, take that at heart. If you're trading, if you're gonna like, yeah, whatever, Clay, I have those big old swings. That's not how it should be. It should be small swings to the downside, and then when you actually get right, you want the big swings to the upside, but just up and down type, just randomness, which is essentially what happened here, that, that's, that's not good. Then I had days where I lost that much net. Trading derivatives and velocity funds is dangerous for a novice desperate to get out of debt. No amount of degrees, which I have, qualify you to trade. Only experience or solid training and learning can help you, and you provide that. I should have signed up for your courses, but never did, and by that, that time, it was too late anyway. But I still follow some of your posts. Thanks for being real, Josh. So quite a few things here. First, trading derivatives, trading leveraged, you know, just instruments. Yeah, he nailed it. For somebody that's new, and then you factor in trying to get out of debt, and then you factor in now these very high risky instruments that are in the market. It's just, it is what it is. And you know, we've already seen the results of all that stuff. And like he said, and I give him props, this guy's got degrees. He didn't say what he has degrees in, but college degrees, they don't mean jack squat. That's why people say, do I need a college degree to trade? No, absolutely not. In fact, I would argue that if you have a college degree, I think it, it makes it a lot harder to trade because you have this, you know, pre preconceived notion about yourself like, oh, I have a college degree, I'm, myself included. I'm getting an engineering degree. I know how to trade, I'll figure. And yeah, it was a very painful experience. So is a college degree gonna help out? Yeah, it can probably help out in a few different ways, but I mean, at the end of the day, if you know that 10 is greater than five, hey, then that's like trading in and of itself. So, but yeah, college degrees don't mean jack squat. I think the market actually laughs at those that has degrees and like, yeah, We'll see how far your book smarts take you into the market. And um, it's it just not a good situation, not a good combination. Trading to get out of debt, being new, highly risky you know, instruments, just not a good combination. And I unfortunately hear this a lot. And yeah, I, Clay, I wish I would've listened to you. I wish I would've got your courses. Uh, and you know, is this some sort of sales pitch on my part to have you buy my courses? I don't know, maybe, maybe it is. But this is why I'm trying to let people know preach and whether or not you buy my courses, maybe you're on the fence about somebody else's courses, get that course. If you like that person's style better than mine or whatever your reasoning is and you're on the fence, seriously, get it. If you feel comfortable with that person, get their course because you need training. You need to understand how to approach the market, how to put together trade plans, how to manage risk or else things can just really spin out of control. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that unless you get my course and you're going to have $81,000 of losses. I'm not saying that. The point here being things can get nasty in a very short amount of time if you are not taking the proper steps. Sure, the proper steps aren't the most exciting ones. They aren't the, the, the funnest ones, but they are the proper ones. So, uh, you know, again, props, shout outs to Josh. So just being so transparent, willing to share. Um, I, you know, I don't fault him at all. I can understand how things unfold, but it sounds like he is now learned he has now realized what path he needs to get on and it sounds like he's going to go back work hard to get those debts paid off for and hopefully you as a watcher uh, if, especially if you're new maybe you're thinking about trying to trade out of debt can uh, learn from this and realize that uh, there's just better ways to go about it and ways that are not going to cause um, a, a big mess that's probably the best way to put it